Hey guys, how's it going? This video lesson is on the concept of the caged system. Okay, caged is spelled C-A-G-E-D. You may or may not have heard of this before, but essentially this is kind of a part two to the previous lesson that I did on the introduction to arpeggios. Okay, so really what we're doing here is this is mostly a lead playing tool. Okay, the way I used cage, caged is used as a lead playing tool. It can also be used to, you know, for rhythms and playing chords in different areas of the guitar, but this is primarily just another way of playing arpeggios, okay? So if you don't know what arpeggios are, go ahead and check out that lesson because this is just another way of visualizing arpeggios. So, basically this lesson is divided into two parts. Number one, how what the caged system is and number two, how to apply the caged system to your lead playing. All right, but before I get into the first two parts, let me just give you uh, a quick overview of what the point of all this stuff is. Okay, so in the introduction to arpeggios lesson, I used the chord progression A minor, F major, C major, E major as my example. So that chord progression is in the key of A minor. Okay, so I could either think in one of two ways. I could think in terms of scales, or I could think in terms of the underlying chords. Preferably you want to think in both, because they're both related to one another. But if I was to think purely in terms of scales, then I would think, okay, I'm an A minor, and I would play my A minor scale up and down the neck. Okay, so my framework would just be the A minor scale. No matter what chord is playing, no matter what's happening, I'm just playing the notes of the A minor scale. Now that works, but it's not always the best way to do things. It doesn't always sound the best. So although it works, although all the notes that you're using will be in key most of the time, it's not always gonna give you the, the best and most pretty sounding notes that you really wanna hit, okay? So the second way of thinking is in terms of chord tones or, or the underlying chords of the progression. So as the A minor is occurring, you can still be working within your A minor framework, but you also wanna be thinking of the individual notes of the A minor chord, okay, which is A, C, and E. So as the A minor is occurring within the progression, you, there's A's, C's, and E's all over the fretboard. So those are going to be like your target notes as that chord's occurring. And then when the F major chord is occurring, you're going to do the same thing. The notes of the F major chord are F, A, and C. And again, there's F's, A's, and C's all over the guitar. Ah, excuse me. Uh, same thing for the C major chord. Okay, so you have C, E, and G in the C major chord. C's, E's, and G's all over the guitar. And the E major chord. Okay, so E major contains the notes E, G sharp, and B. Okay, so now the G sharp isn't necessarily diatonic to the key of A minor, but it still works, all right? That's a typical chord that's thrown into a minor progression, okay? Usually you have a major chord as your five chord in a minor progression. So when the E major is occurring, you'll want to be targeting the E, the G sharp, and the B, okay? Now you can still use your scalar framework to walk from one chord to another, but as each chord is occurring, generally you want to be hitting chord tones as right when the chord starts, if you land right on a chord tone, as the chord change occurs, it's going to give you a very, very good sound. It's going to outline, it's going to outline you know, the chord progression that's going on. A nice analogy I like to use is Think of, you're walking, you need to walk from point A to point B, right? And in order to get from point A to point B, you have to walk through the woods. Now you can either walk a straight line through the woods, and when you do that, sometimes you may be on path, but sometimes you may encounter thick, heavy bushes and just difficult points 
Other times you may even encounter thick, heavy thorn bushes that are just extremely painful to get through. Ultimately, if you keep pressing ahead, you're going to get through the woods and you're going to end up at point B. Okay? So that's how I view scalar thinking. Okay? Now, another way to walk through the woods would be you just stick to the path. All right? So if you sometimes as you're on the path, you may come off the path a little bit. You know, maybe there's some shortcuts. Maybe the path goes around when you could just go straight. You know, maybe a little bit difficult, but for the most part, you're staying on path. All right? Now, that's the way I view chord tone targeting. All right? It's just the easier way. It always works, and everything's just more pleasant. Now, um, the thick, heavy brush periods through the woods are going to be non-chord tones. All right, so while the tones are still in the key, they're not necessarily the best tones to use. Okay, and then the the heavy thorn bushes are out of key chords. So sometimes in chord progressions. There's going to be out of key chords, and if you're strictly just thinking in, in terms of what key you're playing and or what scale to use, you're going to encounter some very bad sounding notes because those out of key chords contain notes that aren't in the scale. So if you're just sticking to the scale, and you know one of those non diatonic chords or one of those out of key chords occurs, you're probably going to experience some very sour sounding notes. All right, so. This cage system is simply a way of just visualizing the fretboard within a key, but allowing you to target chord tones within the particular key. All right, so with that said, let me get on to part one, an explanation of what the cage system is. Okay, so basically the cage system makes use of the movable nature of the guitar. As I've said many, many times, Anything that you play on the guitar, any chord and any scale can be moved and played anywhere on the fretboard. Once you know the shape or the pattern of a particular chord or scale, you can apply that same shape or pattern to any key or any chord anywhere on the fretboard. The shape's going to remain the same. So the caged system makes use of the open C chord, the open A chord, the open G chord, the open E chord, and the open D chord. Okay? So you take your open C chord like this. Notice that the root of the open C chord is the C, okay, on the A string, your third finger. Okay, that's your open C chord. Now, the C chord can also be thought of as a, sort of a bar chord. So if you take your first finger, and you're not really barring because they're open strings, but your first finger would go there if it was a bar chord. And you use your remaining fingers, your fourth, third, and second finger to play the C chord. Okay, so there would still be a bar there if it wasn't open. So you could play the C chord like this. Or you can move this chord up a fret and then bar what otherwise would have been the open strings. Okay, so now that's a C sharp chord because it's one fret up. You can also move it up again. It becomes a D chord, okay? Because now your root is the D. All right, and you can you can do this anywhere. This shape can be played anywhere. So it's just a shape. Down here, you're playing the C chord using the C shape. But if you were to play the same chord for instance, up here on the 12th fret, you're playing an A chord because the 12th fret is the note A, but you're playing it in the C shape, okay? So all of the open chords are movable. You have C, A, G, E, D. All right, so if you take your A chord now, the same thing, you have an open string here for your A string, and you have an open string up here for your E string. Now, again, this chord could be played switching your fingers around, and the open string would be where your first finger bar is at, and you can just move this up. Okay, so now this is an A sharp chord, and you can move it up again. 
So now it's a B, now it's a B chord. Move it up again, it's a C chord. Okay, so this is just the shape. This is the A shape. If I wanted to take the A shape and I wanted to play, I don't know, an E chord in the A shape. My note E is right here on the A string, seventh fret. I just apply this A shape and now I'm playing an E chord using that shape. Okay, and this is just one of your basic bar chords that you see all the time, just a major bar chord. Okay, and then the same thing for the G chord. So your G chord is like this. Alright, so instead of playing it with that fingering, you can play it with this fingering, and your first finger would be out here. So you can then move it up. Okay, so this is a, this is a difficult one to do. But as I said, this is this is going to be used for lead playing. You're not necessarily going to be playing these these weird funky shapes. This is just giving you your where your chord tones are located. Okay, so but you can still move the shape. G shape can be moved anywhere. Blah blah blah. If I wanted to play a C chord, say I want to play a C chord using the G shape. Okay, so my C is here on the eighth fret, low E string. Now I just apply that funky, weird shape, but it's the G shape, but it's still a C chord because I'm playing it right here, okay? Okay, so then your E shape, your E shape is simple because, you know, here's your open, or yeah, here's your open position E chord. Switch around your fingering, move it up. It's just your regular major bar chord rooted on the E string, okay? Okay, so your E shape and your A shape are just your basic major bar chords. So you already know them. You just didn't, you may not have known that they were referred to as the A shape and the E shape, okay? And then the last one is your D. You have your D shape. The root of the D chord is the open D string. So if you wanted to move this up, you would switch your fingering around move it up a little bit and you move your root up one position or one fret so now this is a D sharp chord move it up again your root is there which is the note E so this is an E chord okay so C A G E D caged now I'm gonna give you three minor chord three movable minor chord shapes as well but in the second part of this lesson where we actually target specific uh, roots, thirds, and fifths in each chord, there's another way to do this. But for the purpose of this lesson, there's three movable minor shapes because every chord progression is usually a combination of major chords and minor chords. So with that, the A minor chord is one of the movable shapes. Okay, so here's your A minor chord. So when you move this, you move it up, it's just your regular minor bar chord shape. Okay, the next one is an E minor shape. So your E minor down here. So if you move this up, just your regular minor bar chord rooted on the E string. So you've seen both of those shapes before. And then you have the D minor chord. So here's your D minor. And if you wanted to move that up, it's like this. D sharp minor, E minor. Okay, so these are just shapes. You have your C shape, you have your A shape, you have your G shape, you have your E shape, and you have your D shape for major chords, okay? You can play any chord anywhere on the guitar using these types of shapes. And then for the minor chords, you have your A minor shape, your E minor shape, and your D minor shape. Okay? So that's what the cage system is. That's how these shapes are created. Now, let me give you some actual applications to your playing and how you can use this for your improvisational framework. Okay, so how to apply this to your actual playing? for improvisational purposes and even writing solos or whatever, just for your lead playing 
purposes. So I'm going to use the same example as I used in the introduction to arpeggios lesson. I'm going to use the chord progression A minor, uh, F major, C major, and E major. Okay, so those are my four chords. So I'm in the key of A minor. So my scalar framework is the A minor key, okay, the A minor scale. But I want to walk through the woods on the path, okay? I don't want to I don't want to walk through the heavy brush and I don't want to hit any thorn bushes, okay? I want to do the easy path. So I want to target chord tones as the chord as the chord progression is occurring. All right, so using this these caged chord shapes, this is giving you frameworks for each chord as these chords are occurring. So the way you do this is you can take any one of the chords in the progression and you can use that one chord to figure out different positions on the guitar, okay? So, for example, let's use the C chord of the progression, A minor, F major, C major, E major. So we're just gonna use the C chord to find different positions. So one position you could use, you have a C here on the third fret, A string. So there's your C chord there. So your chord tones are, okay? And then, Another chord in the progression is the F chord. So right near there in that same position is your F chord. It's the F in the E shape. Okay, so this is the E shape of the F chord. And your available chord tones are these. And then you have an E major chord. Okay, so you have an available E major chord right here in this position. So this is the E major chord in the E shape. So those are your available chord tones. And then you have the A minor chord, which is also in the progression. So there's your A minor chord right in that position in the A minor shape. So those are your chord tones for each of those chords in that position. But that's nothing new, you already know that. Those are just open position chords, but you know your available chord tones in that position. So let's say we wanna move up the fretboard a little bit. All right, so we wanna move up the fretboard and chord tone solo targeting chord tones in this area now, all right? So your C here on the fifth fret, no, I'm sorry, your C on the third fret A string. You can now play the C chord using the A shape, okay? So here's your C chord using the A shape. Those are your available chord tones of the C chord. You also have the F major right near it, right here. This is the F major chord in the D shape. Okay, and then you also have an E major chord, which is right here. Okay, so you have your E major chord in the D shape. And then you have an A minor chord. Sometimes it's not always easy to find minor chords using the movable shapes way. I'll give you another method of doing this in the next lesson on caged. But here's an A minor shape right here, okay? So this is the A minor using the E minor shape, okay? Okay, so you have your, your C, all the chord tones from C. Then you have your F, all the chord tones of the F chord. Then you have your E, all the chord tones of the E chord. And then you have your A minor and all the chord tones of the A minor, all right? So now let's move this up a little bit more. Let's say uh, we want to use this C right here. So now we're working in this region of the fretboard. You have this C right here on the eighth fret, low E string. So we could apply our G shape to this C chord. So playing this as a chord, you may not want to do this all the time, but you can still use it as your framework for chord tone targeting. So Here's a C chord, and here's the chord tones. Okay, and then we have a nearby F major. Okay, so your F is located right here on the A string, eighth fret. So you have your F major chord. And then we have a nearby E major chord using the C shape. This is the C shape. Okay, or we 
we can use this E major chord shape if we wanted to. This is the E major in the A shape. All right, and then again, we can just, the, the nearby minor chord is this A minor shape. Or it's the E minor shape for the A minor chord. Sorry if I'm confusing you by doing that. Okay, so moving on, um, we could also play this C chord using the E shape. So here's your note C, so let's apply the E shape to it. Basic bar chord shape. Okay, and then we have a neighboring F major chord because your F is right here. So you could play the F in the A shape. And then we have an E major. Okay, so you just slide down one fret. So there's the chord tones of your E major chord. And then we have a nearby A minor chord using the D minor shape. Okay, so hopefully this is making sense. So you're soloing, you're in the key of A minor, you have a scale to work within, but you want to target chord tones, okay? So we know that there's a C, F, or we'll do it in, in order. You know there's an A minor, F major, C major, and E major right in this area, okay? Now you know there's a, a A minor, an F major, C major, and an E major in this area. And then all four chords are in this area, and then all four chords are in this area. So anywhere on the fretboard, you have all these chord tones available to you. And the way you find these chord tones is just by finding the, the nearest, the nearest uh, shape for each chord. So we were just did the, uh, the E shape of the C chord. So the next shape would be the D shape of the C chord. So here's your note C right here, located on the D string. So we apply this D shape. All right, so this is, isn't really an easy shape to play as a chord but it's still giving you your framework for the C chord using the shape. Okay, so you have a C, and then we want to move on to an F chord. So we could either use this F chord, or we can use, let me see what else. Or we can use this F right here, which uses the G shape. Okay, so there's your note F. So, there's your G shape of the F chord. It's a really hard one to play, but you don't need to play the chord. All right, so that's the F chord. Then we have our nearby E chord. We could uh, apply the, the G shape to the E chord. There's your note E. Okay. And then we could apply the uh, we could apply this shape to the A minor chord, okay? All right, so you have your little soloing area there with an available C, F, E, and A minor. And then, what else did we do? We did uh, C, A, G, E, D. Yeah, so that's all, that's all the positions. And then, you're back up here and you start all over. So up here is basically the same the same as down here, but it's not open anymore, it's just an octave higher. So you have your C chord here in the C shape played higher up the fretboard. Okay, so there's your note C, 15th fret A string. So you have an available C there. Okay, and then you have your uh, F chord. You can play your F chord using the, um, the E shape which is just a basic bar chord. Then you have your E major chord, one down. And then you have your A minor chord, okay? So this position is actually kind of easy because you already know your bar chords, or hopefully you know your bar chords. So you have your, your funky, weird C shape, but then it's just, for all the other chords, it's just bar chord, bar chord, and bar chord. All right, and then you can keep moving up. You can then start back up here, play the A shape of the C, then you can come all the way up here, or where, and you can just keep going. But 
this is just another way to highlight the notes that are available to you for your chord tone target practice. So this way may be a little bit more complicated than the way I showed using the uh, arpeggios, introduction to arpeggio, because the arpeggios way just kind of gives you some shapes. This way can kind of confuse some people because the whole idea of playing F chord in the C shape, you know, I can understand how that may be confusing. But once you get once you get that out of your head and you just realize that you're just playing shapes and there's many ways to play the same chord but just in different shapes, then things may start making some more sense, okay? So, and there's nothing that says you can't combine them too. I mean, you can combine the arpeggio shapes that I gave you in the previous lesson with these shapes. You can also combine these arpeggio shapes with the scales. There's nothing that says you can't do scalar runs. You can sit there and run up and down scales within your soloing all day. It's done all the time. You listen to metal bands, they're running up and down scales like crazy, you know? It's not wrong, it's just different ways of doing things, you know? Ultimately, you want to have full control over your playing. You want to be able to play completely in key, and you want to play completely using chord tones, and you want to be able to combine everything together. That's really the ultimate thing, okay? So, you have this chord progression, A minor, F major, C major, E major. Maybe for a little bit you just want to shred scales, and then maybe you want to beautifully outline the chord progression and really just start targeting the chord tones of the particular chords, all right? And then maybe you want to throw in some blues licks. You want to throw in that blue note, okay? Then maybe you want to reduce your scales to uh, the pentatonic scale, okay? And you want to start throwing in some pentatonic licks. You can do all kinds of stuff, all right? So each one of these lessons that I'm giving you is ultimately how to solo over the fretboard using specific, you know, specific concepts. So this cage system is just one concept of how to do that, and it focuses on chord tone soloing. You're just doing arpeggios. It's just another way to look at arpeggios. So, um, that's about it. I don't want this lesson to run too long. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll gladly help. Thanks.